Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dove Dog and I are gonna show you my 1931 Ford Model A Coupe. So story on this thing is I picked it up at the Skip Carlson auction here a month, month and a half ago. It was in central Minnesota. Skip's still alive. Uh, anyway, some friends of mine called me, Pete and Rudy, and they said, they previewed the auction, they went to look at this 199 Maxwell and they said, you should go to this. There's all kinds of great stuff. So I went there. There's a really nice 3443 one. If you want to watch the auction, we'll put it at the end of the video here. And I uh, went there, no intentions of buying a Model A Coupe. Uh, they no sale the three window, the, you had a 3031 Model A Roadster, and the Maxwell. So this thing was what I thought was fairly affordable. So I threw in a bid, assuming they were going to no sale it, assuming somebody else would outbid me, whatever, try to help them out. And sure enough, we won it. So let's take a look at this thing. Uh, turns out this was Skip's daily. He was driving this thing all over the place year round. More on that later. Duff loves it. He wants to go for a rip and we'll go for a rip later. Like I said, this is a 31 Model A. There's basically they made the Model A from 28 till 31. We'll maybe add some more information to maybe a Morski minute on these Model A's, but this is a coupe, five window coupe. They made several different coupes. They did not make a three window coupe or what I call a three window coupe. They made sport coupes and Stuff like that. Uh, the difference in the 30 and 31s is the grill. There's like a stamped in area on the 30s, I believe. Kind of like is down there. I don't really know. They look really good with 32 grill shells. That's what they need. This thing's got sealed beam headlights hidden behind the standard lens. They look great and they are super, super functional. I don't know where he got this kit or if it was on there. Uh, allegedly, he bought the car with Southern Illinois. He's had it for a handful of years, he said. But anyway, this thing's got like probably the best headlights of anything I own at night, other than some of the late models. And it's all six volt system still. Horn works great. These fog lights, I don't know if I like them. One day I like them, the next day I don't. And they aren't hooked up. So we should probably hook them up, but I kind of like them actually. Not sure what's going on here with this chunk of rubber. I'm guessing it was for the grill was vibrating or rubbing. You can see this, the radiator, she's a little green in the corner, isn't it, Duff? Somebody might have screwed up this flash pan, tying it down on the ride home. And what else while we're up here? It's, it's, it's got rust. It's got paint flaking. It's dinged up. And that's what I like about it. It's presentable, but we can drive up and down the gravel roads. You can see, I don't usually do this, but because it's this car. Look, look, look at all the dust on it. I don't even care. It's a great, great car. Missing a hubcap. Uh, one thing about this car, you can tell he drives it. This has got Lucas tires on it, 19s. Uh, the 28, 29s were a 21 inch wheel. This is a 19 inch wheel, obviously. Same bolt pattern, five on five and a half is a later Fords. Mechanical brakes. He did put, I believe, 35 Ford brake drums. They are cast iron as opposed to stamped steel, he said. I don't know a ton of bolt Model A's, but, but anyway, these wire wheels are balanced. Yes, they are, Duff. Yes, yes, they are. And you never see balanced wheels. I believe this is a Deluxe. On the 33, 34, the Deluxe cars had these, and I, maybe the Deluxe cars had this band. I'm not sure. It's got an electric wiper. They would have been vacuumed from the factory. It's still got the old roof insert. It's got the factory style rear view mirror. It's missing the cover on the running boards. There's a little bit of rust right there. Point it out for him, Duff. Use your nose. Okay or not. And then a little bit right there. That is like all the rust on this car. They're always rotten right here. And they're always rotten right here. And if you want to check these cars out, you can usually look through the trunk or pry the seat ahead. And then the kick panel and screws, and you can look to see if anybody's ever done any work there. And no work has ever been done on this car. It's really good. It's got this old 1954 Bonneville speed trial. Water deco, I'm guessing he put that on there. Maybe this car's been to Bonneville. What do you think, Duff? Yeah, I don't think so either. Like I said, you can see all the dust in the wheels. We drive a lot of gravel because it drives 30, 35. That's the speed it likes. So on the highway, it's kind of dangerous. And it's not dangerous because of the car. It's dangerous because of the other people. We'll just leave it at that, the other people. This car does have blinkers, so that is nice. Like I said, all the lights work. Brake lights, tail lights, blinkers, headlights, the horn. I haven't tried the wiper yet. I haven't needed to, I don't really care. I'm guessing that wiper, even when it does work, doesn't do a whole lot. It is a rumble seat car. That's the step for getting into the rumble seat and that's the handle for hanging onto while you're in there and for getting in there. 
Uh, another thing, these cars will crack out right in here. Pretty common on coupes. It's got two tail lights and they're chrome, so I don't know if that's a deluxe thing or not. Fenders always get bunged up up here, so that's pretty common on these cars as well. And then another spot that they'll rust is right in here where these body lines, there's like three body lines here, here, and here, all kind of meet. And then uh, where the spare tire mounts back here, the bottom of this panel, usually the spare tire would be, or sometimes the spare tire would be here, more on that later. Luggage rack is add-on. Uh, he said it's a piece of crap. I have confirmed it is, in fact, a piece of crap. I don't really hate the look of it though, so it might stay there. But that is one thing I might change is maybe uh, put some different taillights on it or shorten the stanchions. But I think I'm gonna get rid of those steps and those handles just to kind of clean the car up. Because it is no longer a rumble seat car, he changed it to a standard trunk lid. I guess this rattled on him, so he put this tarp strap there, so I left it on there. Uh, the thing with rumble seat cars, basically all you gotta do is buy a different set of hinges they bolt on down here and then they clamp to the uh, deck lid up here again another spot these cars get rusty is right here and this car is absolutely solid so this car could be changed back to a rumble seat but the problem with rumble seats are is when that deck lid opens it goes into the trunk so it takes up not only a bunch of space here but then you can't get that space up there is not accessible he's got the spare tire back here Water pump leaks, so we got coolant. It's an old car, so it leaks oil, uses oil, so we got some 30 weight. He's got a rope, because it's Ford. Guess we got a screwdriver and a jack and a tire. And like I said, not many Model A guys carry a spare tire, but old Skip did. Look at this thing. Like I said, this is his daily, and he has like three miles of gravel. So this thing is just caked with dirt from him driving it up and down gravel. Jack, who carries a jack and a spare? I don't even carry it. In a lot of my late models, unfortunately. But like I said, anyway, he converted this to a trunk so it's more user friendly because nobody wants to ride back there anyway. So we need to do a little bit of work on this uh, hinge slash latch assembly. And then he just filled in the hole up there for the deck lid handle. And like I said, there's just a ton of paint. I think this thing had an amateur paint job, probably I would say in the 70s, the 80s. Like I said, came from Illinois, there's the Illinois decal. Uh, Minnesota Deckel, land of 10,000 lakes. This fender's a little bit better in the back. Maybe we'll put some tail lights in there that actually say stop in the middle. I always thought those were kind of neat. Again, step and handle on this side. The rust is even less on this side. We got a little bit more of a running board cover. I, I thought about putting new ones on, but you know, then where do you quit? You know, it kind of adds to the ambiance of the car. It's, it's perfectly crappy, as uh, Matt at Iron Trap would say. Fenders are basically sacrificial on these cars. They're always beat up. You'll never find any with super nice fenders. So, this car had a side mount carrier, which I believe is an option or a deluxe deal, deluxe package. But I guess the frames on these cars are C-channel. They're only about three inches tall. And he said that the flex, eh, there may be some pheasant blood up there. Don't look away from that. But... I guess it was flexing the frame so much that it was uh, pushing on this wheel well here and it cracked it out there and it cracked it out there and he'd fixed it. And so I definitely want to patch that up a little bit. I'm not going to make it perfect, but uh, long term, I'd like to uh, get rid of that bracket and find a different fender and just shoot it to match because I'm not going to put the spare there. In fact, I'm probably not even going to haul a spare because we haul a lot of uh, mail on this car and parts and other things and that spare tire is always in the way. I should probably just get rid of the luggage rack and put that on the back, spare tire. But anywho, what else, Duff? Should we open the uh, the hood aprons for him? Oh, you're looking at the door like we're gonna go for a ride. We will, after a bit here. Kind of a two-handed job, here's your hood latches. Just these little uh, guys, they got a spring inside that barrel and a hook. Your handle here, tip her up. Pretty straightforward. You can see the oil puddle down there, the antifreeze puddle up there. See how greasy the engine is, how covered in dust it is. It's got this auto light manifold heater, which is an aftermarket accessory like JC Whitney or, or whoever. Obviously, Auto Light was the brand. But this just kind of bolts to your exhaust manifold. 
takes hot air off the radiator plus hot air off the manifold hopefully you don't have any exhaust leaks and pushes it into the car with this hole in the firewall he put this he said he, i don't know i call them wolf whistles but this uh, vacuum whistle on the air intake and he said it doesn't work i haven't tried it i don't even know where the handle's at he said he's had several of them but they never hold up but i guess he was buying them used at swap meets it's got the standard style distributor cap, uh, you, the original style, I should say, and then it's just these brass straps going to the spark plugs. Uh, they do make a conversion kit. He said it's got, has been converted to a later model, like Y block style Ford's points. And then they make a conversion kit to put, you know, magnetos and distributors and all that, but they do make a kit to put like a standard style distributor cap with regular plug wires on it as well. Like I said, the water pump, we have tightened the packing. It doesn't seem to keep it from uh, leaking. No flexi hoses, just straight hoses on these things. Uh, we did grease the water pump. It's got the four blade fan, some of them are a three blade fan. He did put an alternator on it because he was driving it a lot at night in the winter because it gets dark at 5 p.m. here. And so he said you were supposed to uh, adjust the, I think the contacts on the generator. So he uh, said alternators are the way to go. So that's all right with me. I would like to uh, address the bracket on that as well but we'll look at that in a bit so you always want to check the oil and the antifreeze on this thing before you drive it or any of these old cars but this car especially they did put a fuel filter in it these are a gravity flow fuel system this is a late 31 it's got this uh you know like a oval shape teardrop 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 shape dent in the firewall and it's been patched up it should go right from here out of the fuel tank into the carburetor but he put a shut off inside the car so he didn't have to get outside the car turn the fuel shut off on and off would be right in here so uh, you can see where these two fittings are. It goes inside the car because he said he didn't feel bad about cutting the firewall up because it's in such bad shape. But this is a late 31 only option. Uh, you got your coil up here. Uh, what little wiring is comes through the firewall right there. Yeah, distributor cap you can pop right off. A couple of bale clips right there. Nothing to it. The heater actually works surprisingly well. New speedo cable on it. And there is your fuel fill so you got to be careful don't overfill it otherwise it covers the entire tank with fuel the hood does need a little bit of adjustment he thinks part of that is because of the fender and frame and what's going on there you can see the gap isn't phenomenal but it wasn't that great on these cars originally another thing with these model a's is the doors overlap the body they don't sit flush so you can see kind of how it overlaps there so door fitment is kind of a thing another reason you can see it's an amateur restoration is they painted over that chrome right there this is a non-pressure cooling system it does not have a temperature gauge either so therefore it can't overheat sarcasm there it can most definitely overheat but you can't see that it's overheating you can smell it same thing on the other side to open the hood and there is the only fuse in the car which i have had to replace i don't know how i blew it but i did like I said, no flexi hoses. These cars are pretty cool. They only got little chunks of straight hose and then they had like a bent steel pipe. There's a petcock down here to drain the system. Here's our dipstick, oil fill. The starter is just a push button that uh, closes this contact right here between the battery, spins it over. Hand controls on the steering column. Uh, this one's for your throttle and this one's for your advance. I don't mess with the advance because it just works so I don't touch it. Uh, serial number on these cars is stamped right in the side of the block. It's also stamped on the frame underneath the uh, splash apron and then underneath the body in two other spots. Yeah, that's about all there is to see under the hood. Not much. Pretty simple setup. You gonna show them the controls inside the car? I don't know if there's room for both of us in there to, to show them, but we'll give it a whirl. Like I said, this car is pretty cozy with Duff and I. I've had a, given a couple of buddies rides in it. And I wouldn't say I'm a huge human being, Okay, I'm a, I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm six one, two. I don't know. I don't have a scale on. We'll just say I'm like two thirty five. Okay, two forty. But anyway, if you get uh, two individuals that are six foot tall and two hundred plus in there, it is cozy. People were a lot smaller in the thirties, but we're just really like snuggling. Good boy. I am almost positive this is the original interior. Otherwise, it was a replacement that was put, like I said, probably in the 70s. This is your window crank, obviously. I've never had a car with full interior, one of these. Ah, my sedan might have some stuff. But anyway, it's got the Estuchions or Stetchins, or I don't know what you call them. I never knew they even had those on Model A's. 
That's your window crank. The windows just go up and down. The later model cars, like 33s and 4s, actually rolled back a little bit and then went down. It does have safety glass. Somebody asked that if these cars have safety glass. They do. Not much for window garnishing because it's just a bottom plate on these. Uh, the back ones are an actual surround. Uh, but this is your, your door handle, and you don't go forward or backwards. I have to show people that ride with me. That's how you release it. It's pretty smooth action, actually. And then this is your lock back here. I'm not going to touch it because my luck, I would lock it and never be able to get back in. It's got the handy-dandy door pocket. Skip rolled his own cigarettes, so he left us a nice brown bic. And it uh, looks like some fuses and some business cards and a BIC wannabe. Maybe we should start carrying BICs at Mortski.com. I don't know, the shipping. You probably can't ship those because they're flammable and combustible and whatnot. Continuing on, the seat is very, very well worn on the driver's side, which is perfect. It's actually, the seat's real good. We'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back. Duff got sick of waiting for me, so. He is out of the car. I didn't know these cars actually had rubber seals around the doors or foam or whatever it is. And maybe somebody added that over the years. It is missing the door check strap, so we should get one of those coming. Yeah, I know a Duff. It's not good. Horn works. And like I said, here's your advance for your timing. This is your throttle over here. Now this is your headlights, there's park lights, highs, lows, no, parks over this way, I think. Maybe that's not park lights, maybe it's just tail lights. But I definitely bumped that getting out of the car and the battery was dead when I get home. Yeah, that's just tail lights. Long story short, make sure that sucker's pointing straight down when you get out of the car. And it's easy to uh, bump when you're getting out because it's tight. Speaking of that, there's a little shelf back here behind the seat. You can see where he's got his koozies and his gloves and his blankets. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of that shelf and move the whole seat back. The adjuster for the seat is right there. It's just like a big machine screw. And the whole, it actually, I slid it back. Skip's a little bit shorter guy than me. Oh, one, another spot these cars crack out is right there at the belt line. Squirrel! But anyway, I think we're going to do away with that shelf. And that's like I said, oh, you can tell he's got the hamburger helper gloves back here and a, and a scarf. Oh, you see how dusty it is from the gravel roads. Can koozies for partying it up. Jeez, three of them. Dang. Dang. Oh, yeah, Skip had a few motorcycles. You'll see that at the auction. The white iron band. And then a blanket for, you know, keeping warm. A couple of the buttons are coming loose in the seat, but it does have a full interior. Headliner, visors, which I do not know if are stock or not because I've never had a car with interior. And the mirror's a little decayed. Pretty basic in here. It's just a float for the uh, fuel gauge, which I found out leaks when you fill it up of over three quarter. It's got a little light here for the dash. Watch the amp gauge move when you flip that on. Speedometer just kind of spins around in there. It looks like it's got 36,834. I, I'm sure it was probably reset when it was restored. I doubt it's 134,000. Key, kind of a neat setup. Let's see if I can show you. Duff, it's not enough room for both of us to give this uh, walk around here. You can see your feet barely fit in here. <clears throat> Skip and I were talking about this. It, it actually wears away on the kick panel from sliding your seat in and out. People had smaller feet in 1931. It does have a new rubber floor mat. I had to have that out to charge the battery because I left the taillights on. It's got an add-on blinker system here. Yeah, but I mean, it's probably from the 50s or the 60s. What, we're talking Model A's here, pal. What else we got? I think this dash light was an add-on as well. Uh, the ignition switch, they're kind of cool. So you don't actually crank the engine because the starter switch is down there like you talk about with your feet and that's kind of tough with the big feet. Uh, gas pedal brake clutch just like your late models but watch the ignition switch it'll pop out so you can turn it and the car will still be on the way you kill the car let's push that in again you can see the amp gauge wiggle uh, the dash I believe should be black I'm not an expert but 
I'm thinking somebody put a fuel tank in this car at one point and then just primered it, painted the outside, and didn't do the inside. Here's your choke. I believe there's like an enrichment. Like this, that's that's what that little arrow there is for to tell where your enrichment's at. I don't touch it. That's your choke. So you gotta reach over your passenger's legs, you know, if you got the old lady with you, just tell her to be prepared. I don't know where that lever is. Oh, it's way down there for that horn. There's our fuel shut off down there. And you see that little uh, flipper? That's for that's your heater. She's on uh, full blast right now. You spin her to the left and shut that off it's in the summer. I think somebody put replacement kick panels. You know, obviously they don't match the door panels. So I'm guessing somebody uh, put those in there probably at the same time as the rubber floor mat. If you're looking at one of these cars and want to see if it's been patched in there, which I would highly recommend, bring a flat screwdriver, take that kick panel off. If you're paying good money for a car that's got an interior, I'm sure the seller will be more than willing, they should be, to let you take that kick panel off to see what kind of work's been done in there. Like I said, no temp gauge. Uh, I would love to find, they make Aristocrat as the brand. They make like a surround for this gauge cluster. And then you can put more gauges in there. And I'd like to get rid of an amp gauge and put a volt gauge and maybe a temp gauge and an oil pressure. Not so much a big deal, but the water temp would be nice. I knew that now they make those motor meters that go in the uh, radiator and I should uh, put one of those in there. That would be a good idea. Air conditioning, these don't have a cowl vent because you got uh, the fuel tank up there, but they do have these, uh, whatever, you can set the window out to that notch. So that's that's just AC and then max AC is you, you flip her, you loosen these up, you spin the windshield all the way out. There's our switch for the wipers. Like I said, that's aftermarket electric. They should have been vacuumed from the factory. Duff's got his own little pocket over here. Looks like he's got a spare glass aftermarket. Oh my gosh, made in USA. Better hang on to that one. Fuel filter. Oh, that's where it came from. Mary, Carol, and Norman T. Brainer in Rochester, Illinois. Huh. So he wasn't lying to us. But yeah, pretty simple in these cars. Controls are, are basically all the same. Um, all the Model A's, whether it's a truck, pickup, sedan, roadster, car, coupe. Should we show them how we start it? We can do that. So, first thing is, we always turn the fuel off. Because like I said, it's gravity feed. If you don't have an absolute perfect needle and seat, which none of these cars do, all the fuel is going to run out. These are an updraft carburetor, so it won't fill the cylinders with fuel, but it'll dump it on the floor. No air cleaner on these. I think they made aftermarket air cleaners that go on there. Probably should get one all the gravel we drive, but... We should get a list going all the things we need. Anyway, turn the fuel on. You know the fuel's on because when the lever is in line with the uh, line of fuel, the fuel line, you know what I'm saying. That means it's on. If it's uh, perpendicular to it, it's off. And then we pull our choke on. Leave the choke on for about a revolution and a half, Skip said, and it's worked great for me. Turn our ignition on. This is our park brake lever. Park brake is on, the head is off, back is on. This is a three speed, over and up is reverse, first, second, third. Clutch in, give her a little bit of gas, crank her over for a revolution and a half, push the choke in, lights right off. And it doesn't matter if it's hot, cold, whatever, that's kind of just always the way that it starts. You can adjust up the idle for cold idle or slow it down. She runs pretty smooth. Doesn't have uh, much of a hot rod sound. You can buy overhead valve kits for these things. You can buy, you know, cams, you can buy aluminum heads, you can buy overdrive transmissions, different gears. That's what I like to do is put like some 354s. I'm guessing this thing's got like 378s or 410s. But this thing works so good the way that it is. I don't really want to mess with it too much. I thought about putting some 35 Ford wheels and lowering it. Well, it's hard to lower it with the mechanical brakes because then you got to keep all that geometry correct. So, yeah, it just snowballs. So I think we're just going to kind of leave it, you know, maybe add a moto meter on it. You know, maybe fix that door strap. Um, take those trinkets off for the uh, rumble seat. Maybe find a different fender if one comes across. Maybe get those lights working up there. Fix the leak on the water pump. Maybe... I do have a, a really nice record 3031 radiator. We could put that in there, maybe put some new hoses on it. Just little stuff, but I've probably put, uh, I don't know how many miles. I should have 
checked when I bought the car, but I've put three quarters of a tank of gas through this thing since I filled it, plus how much was in there before. So I run a tank of fuel through this thing. And I don't know what this gets for mileage, but I put a couple hundred miles, or I put a hundred miles on this thing, which is pretty good because I bought this thing in late October or early November. So yeah, it's been cold. So I've been driving this thing. And then it's dark too, because by the time we shut down the shop for the day, it's dark and it's like, enough, let's load up, go have a ride, cruise over to Pookie's, run her to town, do whatever. So I've been driving this thing as much as you can. And this car is great. Get yourself an early restored or, or amateur restored Model A. They're fun cars. They're not fast. Um, they're not roomy. There's no radio. There's no AC. The heat's not that good, but they're fun little cars and they're, they're pretty good investments because the, like the Model Ts and are kind of like tractors. They're dying off because the jingle generation, I guess I call them. Those guys are kind of dying off and supply and demand. Uh, hot rod guys do a little bit of the Model T, but hot rod guys absolutely love Model As, especially coupes and roadsters. So there's always going to be that demand there. Uh, yeah. But anyway, that's uh, that's all Skippy here. The uh, Skip Carlson Model A coupe that I did not want to buy. I just thought it was super reasonable. If you want to own this thing, we'll put price and availability in the video description. I would sell this car, but I don't really want to because I'm never going to find one as good. I've got six Model A coupes now. Uh, I've kept every one that I've bought. I've never sold a Model A coupe. And this is, like I said, the nicest one I've had. So it's going to be pretty hard to replace, but... Like I said, I bought it, not really wanting it, but I didn't know how great this car was until I started driving it. And I wish I would have maybe bought uh, his Roadster too, because I'm sure that Roadster would have been the same way. But anyway, uh, yeah, pretty cool car. Like I said, uh, I don't know a ton about Model A's. I'm not the expert by any means. I'm learning as we go. And uh, the more I drive it and the more I work on it, the more I tinker with it, this is a great car. So I tell you what, we're going to run this thing around. And we're going to put her up on the uh, Wildfire 4-post lift. And we'll take a look at the bottom side. And then after that, uh, maybe we'll go take her for a ride. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to shut the fuel off. Urgh. Got it. Skip said he moved that shut off to inside the car because he parked this thing in a very tight garage. It was hard to get her on the car to get to the other side because he had to leave room on this side to get out. So good call. And then you don't have to open the hood every time either. What are you doing over here? Well, I'm contemplating. Uh, you're, con you're contemplating? You don't want to do it wrong? Don't want to do it wrong. What are the oh, you're cutting up Mickelson's gas tank bracket strap lift kit extension. That's a good thing to do to that. Cut that up. Oh, and that, uh, You couldn't make that any worse than him. Oh, you got to come off the front, huh? Kind of cut that at an angle. And then come up. You know what I would do? What you do? I'd cut them tubes and lengthen the whole damn thing. Cause otherwise, if you get too much weight out front, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tippy. Yeah. We can do that. And then we should... gotta make. They don't make Oldsmobile engine stands for 394 Oldsmobiles. Yeah, if you could find some tubing that size, to sleeve them. All right, back to work, Duff. We interrupt your regularly scheduled shenanigans to replace the nylon rope on the 22 foot tilt bed. If you didn't catch the 48 Chevy Coupe video, I may or may not have let that hang off the trailer and drag on the road. So got to the auction, didn't have a hook. Good news is a rope's only like 85 bucks. And I know you could probably put an end on it, but the last thing I need is a hook shooting through somebody's face, especially yours, Duff. So it looks like there's just an eyelet on the end of our Badlands winch. When it gets to the red, stop going out. Come on now, I'm trying to show the people. And that's all that holds it. All right, carry on. How are you gonna make that work? This eyelet's bigger than that one. Can you just take the bolt out and just put the bolt through that hole? That's kind of my thought. Did you have that thought all on your own? I did. I was gonna ask, but you know, why would we do that? Make sure you wind it around there the right way. Otherwise the winch controls are gonna be backwards, which conveniently the old bad land doesn't go in reverse. I can't imagine you would really like that. Not so much. I can already hear my name just getting cussed out for the rest of eternity. Don't get too crazy. Let's, let's 
could see it. Was, it. it was, I was, I'm more worried that it's. That's what I mean. Let's check it first. What was that? It, Falling out in there. That was silly. We should just take this and put it on there as a washer. Now that we've already screwed it up. We just put a couple washers on there just to space it out. Okay. Come on. What size is that? That's painfully slow to wash. Well, you know, using what I got. There you go. How to put a winch cable on. Tech tip of the day, get yourself a nylon rope. They're way better than winch cables for what I do. And make sure you drop your wrench down right when the person's talking. Oh man, roll it up nice and tight like the old one. Or the new old, the, yeah, that one. You're a gentleman and a scholar. All right, now back to your regularly scheduled programming. We just can't have our trailer winched down while we're uh, still trying to operate around here. Cause that's no good for business. All right, we got the old skip coop up on the lift here. We got the four post lift cause it's, it's just easier with this car. And for an inspection, we're not really working on anything, I hope. Uh, just use our old uh, wildfire lift that we got here. Drive around there, slid the ramps out of the way, lift it up. Let's take a look at this thing. You gonna tell him all about Model A stuff? He's gonna tell him that there's a puddle of antifreeze up there that he's not gonna drink. So, oh boy. Not even an insulated connector there or there. So we could probably clean up a little wiring. They didn't use zip ties, they used to use electrical tape. I'm guessing this was Oh yeah, some type of insulation that went between the rear cross member and the floor, probably, could be. He did say that there was supposed to be a cross brace that went from there to there that had cracked loose. Yeah. All right, got rid of our visitor. So like I was saying, there's supposed to be a cross brace that went from here over to here on the bumper bracket, but uh, the previous owner claims that luggage rack caused it to fail. I don't know. Oh, look at these. Scotch locks, the electrical guillotine. There's a little rust there in the uh, sub rail. Pretty common. They actually got wood in there as a spacer. And you can see it's kind of loose. It's got some friction shocks back here that probably could use some work. A little adjusting. This is why the brakes on these cars are usually so bad. Uh, one of these is for the parking brake and one is for the actual brakes and they're uh, all rods and levers and linkages and there's all kinds of adjustment and spots for them to wear pins to go bad so on and so forth so but the brakes on this car are really good look at this wheel weights that's when you know a car was meant to be driven when they put wheel weights on the old wire wheels the bushings and the leaf spring ain't too bad look at all this grease that's on them and the dirt that's stuck to the grease you never see that on these cars Looks like they've been uh, checking the rear end once in a while. Doesn't look like there's any leaks other than maybe coming out of that plug. So we'll check that. Factory exhaust is just this one pipe and that, I don't know, funnel shaped muffler that stops right here. That's how they were from the factory. This side's got a little rust in the sub rail and that wood block is loose. There's a little bit of cracking in the trunk area in there from some stress. But for a 92 year old car, not bad. A little rust in the floor pan. Looks like they put a board up there. I think you can buy this piece. Well, you can buy all this car new, so I'm sure you can buy that, but we're probably not even going to worry about that. More wood blocks mounting the body, and that's how you know it's been taken care of, because usually these rot out and are gone. There's a six-volt battery, both floor pan. There's a brake light switch. All it's usually got is just a little rod that pushes or pulls on it to activate the brakes. Tranny is an ooey gooey mess. Looks like it's leaking out of the rear seal here. 
and uh, running down so we should probably top that off some 8090 it's got a new speedometer cable and yes the speedometer does work yeah no big surprises under here again grease just schmooed on everything so that's how you know the car has been driven recently engine again a mess rear main seals leaking i don't know that drain back tubes leaking the radiators leaking just a little bit so yeah she's an old car it looks like somebody maybe put bushings in these not too long ago front shocks not hooked up either side i'm sure the side's frozen yep she's frozen up so maybe uh grease her up i guess he's got 35 ford drums up here these are a cast iron drum where the original 31 model a or all the model a's are stamped steel so get a little improvement there yeah wouldn't hurt to maybe clean this up try to find where the leaks at seal it up there's the headlight switch and the horn all that runs right through the center of the steering column because that's our steering sector there's your drain petcock for your radiator yeah she looks pretty dang good underneath pretty solid a couple stress cracks a little bit of rot in the floor and even the springs are still here to hold the breaker rods good stuff a lot of grease points it's going to take a solid 20 minutes just to grease this thing up with an electric grease gun this thing's probably never seen one of those before all right we'll check some fluids and grease her up we're back on the ground Man, I'm so glad this Cutlass is gone. I could tell you a story about people and how much I love them later. But anyway, we gotta load this thing up. He's got no winch, so let's be big kids and use Bernie. He wanted to push it on, but nah, not for me. We got a winch. Everybody needs a tow truck. Just gotta tie it ahead and let the trailer tilt. We're good to go. Good old Bernie saves the day again. Everybody needs a tow truck, in case you didn't know. All right. We gonna let them tie it down? Dang right. Falls off, it's their problem. All right, late night. We gotta get back to work. Did you bring us some tits up ranch decals? No, I didn't. I'm all out. I ordered some today, though. This is unacceptable. They'll be here December 6th. <laughs> uh, you still got all your teeth. Yeah, uh, I gotta go to a surgeon, get them pulled, and they're gonna do our canals on the bottom. We could do it ourselves. Oh, dude, I'll just lay on the hood. You just yank her out. Oh. Hey, where do we get those sweatshirts? I don't know, store. Oh, that's not a tits up ranch? No, it's not. So? I got one in my vehicle. <laughs> Are those Crocs? Dude, if you ain't cracking, you ain't rocking. <laughs> They're not even insulated. No, I got my insulated ones. The way I gotta pull them off. I need some steel tooled ones though, you know, so I can work in them. Are those new pants? They look a little. I don't know. My wife washes them. Fresh and hot and dry. She washes them? I guess so. She's a keeper. Yeah, I'll keep her around a couple more years. <laughs> <laughs> then trade her off for a newer model? Ah, yeah, maybe she's she's almost 27 now, so. Wow, you've been married for 11 years already? Something like that. Five. <laughs> oh, I thought she was 16 then. Well, that was when you knocked her up. Yeah, yeah, when I did that. I was 35 when I did that. <laughs> Classic, you know, get them while they're young and dumb. <laughs> Trap them. Oh, all right, well, thanks for coming to visit and petting my dog. Well, your dog Come back when you don't have your teeth so that you're more entertaining. <laughs> He even laughs like Mojo. Hope when you pull your teeth, there's like a whistle when you laugh too. You want some candy? Oh, the guy who whistles, the, the guy who whistles all the time in family. I got problems. I got problems down myself. Hey, I just want to talk to you. Why don't you come over to my place and then we can go in the back room and play crazy snakes? Hey. Yeah. yeah. You don't. You don't like creepers? Your owner's the biggest one. Don't look at me like that. Oh, he's just a good bully. All right, if you guys don't know, uh, DD Shmoo Shop up there in Kanukistan, he dropped off a Bricklin here, I don't know when, a while ago. And uh, he got it from some other feller, and it didn't have a title, so he had to get a, a title to get it across the border. And he, and he asked if he could set it here, and I said, 
Absolutely, Dan. You know, anything for you. You're my hero. I vitalized you. You're the reason I started YouTube. So I got to meet uh, him and Danny. I really wanted to meet uh, Tanner and Stevie or Bill and Doc or whatever their dog's names are. But anyway, uh, he's going to have that car, a buddy of mine, the uh, Mower Man Jr., he's going to haul that thing up to Pembina, the border city town. And I don't know, Dan's coming to get it, or he's making big money, so let's be honest, he's hiring somebody else to do it, just like he's hiring somebody to haul it. And, you know, he's, he gave me tens of dollars to store the thing for the last six months. Uh, but anyhow, uh, DD Schmoo Shop, you can get their merch. Uh, I think it's ddschmooshop.ca, and you can, and, you, and they, they had shirts, you know, they're starting big. But now he's got decals, so he, he shipped me a whole bunch of their decals, and he thought for advertising that I would put these, these decals on his car, so, you know, going up and down the interstate and, and, the, and the folks at the border could see them. So let's take a look at these. I mean, probably not my first choice of decals, uh, you know, because we have the best merch probably in the entire world. I don't have any here. Yeah, we do. We got it all over the toolbox. I put some magnetic backing on them so that when Pookie's kids come over, they can play with them, you know? We got all these different designs and then the rock autos and whatnot. Get yours at Mortski.com. We like magnets on the back of those. And then we got magnets on our, uh, what do we call those things? Cyclops. We got magnets on our can cozies. We got magnets on our, on our schmoo drivers, DD Smeed Shop schmoo drivers. But anywho, yeah, look at these. I don't know. I, I guess Dan's, um, I guess just Danny's just a, a roommate because apparently he's into the rainbow stuff. That dipstick is really going to screw a guy. But I mean, to each their own. I'm, I'm proud of Dan that he's, he's finally come out. This one's a, that's, that one's a, that one's, that's aggressive, Dan. But you know, you do you. Uh, he doesn't like children. We know that, that Danny is hot and she, uh, she hits curbs. As long as she's hitting curbs and not hitting Dan. Again, like I said, Dan doesn't, doesn't like kids. But I guess, you know, with, with your lifestyle, you're probably not going to be reproducing. And this explains why he's so terrible at driving. And, and this I kind of think is funny, you know, honk if parts fall off because you've seen most of his hack jobs, so it wouldn't be uh, surprising. His parts fell off, but so anyway, uh, uh, ddspeedshop.ca or something like that. Go check it out. Or go to his website and you'll and you'll find it. Yeah, these stickers. I don't believe they're available to the public yet. Just on his, give him some time, but he's gonna get them up there. You don't look impressed. Yeah, our decals are way better. Yeah, get your good stuff at morski.com. And he's in Kanakistan, and he doesn't even ship to Kanakistan, so he's just kind of shatting on his own people up there. Just William Shatner it up. I'm. Too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So let's get this thing out of here now that we got our uh, 12,000 pound Badland winch uh, recabled. Even though it doesn't extend, it only retracts. So that's, I like these winches. They're good until they're not. And this one almost made it a whole year. But we're going to keep running it because we're on a budget. We just blew our budget putting that new cable. And why do they got to be 85 foot cables like? We're talking about this last night. 22 foot trailer. If I had a 30 foot cable, that would be enough, right, Duff? Why do you need so much attention today? Should we go outside and bring bring Dan's car in here and apply his decals for him? Yeah, guy, you're such a dirt ball. Such a dirt ball. All right, let's uh, not drag our chain like we drug our uh, winch. Oh, you want to put that up there for me? Okay, I'll get it myself. Tech tip of the day: get yourself a bobcat. Cut a hole in the fork, put a ball in there, and you can back up trailers like nobody's business. Still a great deal in the 48 Chevy. Still available, and everybody's saying how it's too cheap, but nobody's come and got it yet. And don't you worry, we gave Canada's finest the best parking spot in the whole yard. Holy buckets, what are the neighbors doing out here? Just, uh, Playing with the tractors, picking some rocks. Look at this stuff. Oh, it's a rhino, I think. Looks like they're scraping a little dirt and uh, picking a little rock. Doing all the fun stuff out here. They just tiled this stuff. Duff's coming to check it out. And there was some rocks the size of Volkswagens out here, so. Are you okay? Volkswagen. 
swag. They're getting those all picked up because they pushed him up into my trees. And I made him feel real bad. Is that Harv Dog over there? Oh man. They got the veterans out here working today. Well, I want to go pick some rocks. Let's do this. Oh man, it is not smooth. Let's see if Rhino's gonna let us pick this rock. Duff, you're you're not gonna dig that one out, buddy. These hydraulic forks, they are the cat's pajamas. Oh, that's a big boy. That's a big boy. Oh, oh. We're gonna have to get her a different angle. Rhino's probably getting mad. He's like, just get out of my way. I'd have had that thing picked up by now. Oh yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Look at me. I'm a farmer. Don't drop it. Don't run underneath it. <laughs> I remember in my day, we had to pick these by hand. Uphill both ways. Yay. Yay! All right, let's get this tree roll fine scooped up. No more screwing around and BSing with the farmers. Somebody got sick of running around a bean field and wanted to ride with me on the way into town, huh? Yeah. We've got a little window for you to keep an eye out what's going on over there. But you can't see what's going on ahead of me. I sure would hate to put my pallet forks right through a rocker panel of a... Canadian supercar. What's the difference between a sports car and a supercar? I can tell you there's nothing super about this thing other than it's leaving. Boop, 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 boop. Canadian supercar for sale. Hit us up at ddshmooshop.ca. Son of a biscuit, Duff. Check this thing out. Tires are even still up. Aluminum radiator, flexi hoses, white zip ties, thumb screw clamps. This thing is a real steamer i'm guessing the uh, power steering oh, plastic fan with a spacer this thing is so good that mojo had to come check it out you want a sweet deal on a canadian supercar mojo I might. look at it it's like basically made up like a boat it's fiberglass open the door everything goes with <laughs> there's no door handle Oh. Yeah, you got to drink a Red Bull because it gives you gull wings. Looks like we got a drive shaft and some, some batteries, fuel tank, jumper cables, electric fan, nothing, nothing but the finest here in the old Bricklin. All right, we got to put some uh, shipping decals on it. You going to help? I don't know. Or you don't know. I don't know what that's all about. You ever you ever been to Canada? Me? No. Oh, you ain't missing much. Okay. Rear yeah, window eh? defrost. Look, there's some there's some locking pliers in there. Well, we better, look at that. We better get them out of there. Yeah, we should keep these locking pliers. There's oh yeah, <laughs> Mojo laid claim to them. Hey, how about this distributor? You better take that too, flamethrower. Edelbrock electric fuel pump. Yeah, we're keeping that too. That's storage. We keep them cheap ratchet straps. We're gonna need them. Look at this. They put a flexi hose on it, and they had a perfectly good rad meter hose right there. Is that a fancy electric? Oh, look at new part. Oh, a loser switch? That's ours. What's this? Ooh, a distributor wrench. Yeah, we better keep this. You want that? It's a lifetime warranty. What country of origin? Made in Taiwan. That's all you. Kid Ooh, 5 16 inverted flare adapter. That's a good one. Two of them. A spark tester. This is this is like Christmas. <laughs> We're keeping that rad meter hose. How about a, a tubing cutter? You want that? 
ideal hose clamps for keeping those. Ooh, bunch of brand new grade eight hardware with a container. How about a filter wrench? You want that? Yep. Ford distributor cap, brand new. Yep. I better Spark. go dump my hand. Yeah, we're gonna need a bigger shopping cart. <laughs> Auto light 25 spark plugs. Hopefully they're the new ones. Come on now, they're all stuck together. Just like the magazines and DD Speed Shop's bathrooms. Ooh, those are new. Definitely keeping those. Man, it's like whoever parked this thing was sponsored by O'Reilly's. Made in Mexico. Oh, that's the rotor. We'll leave him his little, little drive shaft in there. He might, he might need that. Edelbrock fuel filter. Anodized aluminum. <whistles> Nothing but the finest. Oh, we can see who purchased it. 12, 15, a 22. Eustis, Florida, 1500 South Bay. There was $537 worth of parts in here. The battery was 113 bucks times one, two, three. Michelle at drawer four was the, I uh, wonder if Michelle's still working there. She was the one who rang them up. There's still warranty information on this stuff. What a deal. What a deal. Load the cart. Brake fluid? Don't mind if I do. What kind of phone charger is that? Oh, it's not for an iPhone. Oh, belt. Yeah, we're keeping that. All kinds of brand new red shop rags. They aren't really red anymore, but we don't care what color they are. We're not racist around here. Those smell like chloroform, though. Excuse me. Do you think these bar napkins smell like chloroform? I'm kidding. Red Siri, can I buy you a drink? We don't like white zip ties, though. We, we might be kind of racist on those. Anything in the passenger side? Well, the door is taped shut, so they don't want that coming open. You better leave them the fire extinguisher. They might need that. Ugh. It's not so much holding it open, it's getting it up there. Sometimes I have a hard time getting it up, Mojo. <laughs> what do we got? Berryman's V12. Never tried it, is it any good? Yeah. Engine fan spacer kit. New screwdriver. Ooh, black zip ties are keeping them. Multimeter, we don't want that. We don't even know how to run those. Gas can. <laughs> I know somebody that could use a gas can. Ah, well, just because we ran out of gas. It's a good thing we leaked all that gas out earlier because uh, I'm pretty sure we just ran out of petrol. Tech tip of the day, make sure your fuel gauge works. Don't be a wank. Fill your tank. Idiot. Idiot. Brand new Ford ignition mount, or uh, is that ignition? Yeah. Yep. Carburetor kit, a rapid charge battery charger, eh. Fuel filter. Yep. How are we sitting on funnels? Need one. Need one? Okay. Oh, a flamethrower Pertronics. We're always missing them. Mm -hmm. Everybody steals my coils. <laughs> Another fuel filter, glass cleaner. We better see if these batteries come back to life. Ugh. Good grief. My pockets are full of stuff here. I don't like cheap jumper cables, do you? Yeah. That's a good spot for them. You're not helping. Carb cleaner times two. Christmas in November. All the fuel. You didn't bring a big enough cart. Yeah. Come on, let's go start stacking a little more. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Alrighty. I think we got most of it. Yeah, some 12 gauge wire. Oh, you're a gentleman and a scholar for holding that up. Oh, see? these are not comfortable cars to get in and out of. Glad I didn't wear my Scottish skirt today. Hey, what's this? Oh, that one's cheap. Old. That one's used up. Watch your nose, Duff. <laughs> out, come on. Come hey. on, Duff, come on. You don't want to go to Canada. Come on, come on, Duff. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> oh, it goes down nice and slow yeah, at least. Go. Oh. If there was like a complaint department I could talk to, a Morsky repair, maybe I'll maybe I'll go after them. Hey, you want to just do like a revival, like a revive and drive on it, get all fixed up, put some new tires on it, and some brakes, and like just you know, give it the full Morsky treatment. Here's what Dan has to say about this thing. Oh, it's so much worse than I remember. Like I like it better at your place. Also, that that's a fucking supercar Morsky. You don't even understand how that's not some piece of model A. Canadian supercar. For a Canadian superhero. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't worry about putting them on straight, he said, because the stickers aren't straight, so they shouldn't go on straight. 
You got it, Dan. He definitely said don't put it on anything glass or that it's easy to come off. Put it on, put it on fiberglass, rubber, you name it. You name it. That one's pretty straight. We're not even gonna get any bubbles in them. We're we're doing it right, Dan. Not just shimooing them all over. Uh, he said don't don't put the duplicates on there, just uh keep them for myself. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Real swell guy. Yep, with his heart. Just giving back to the old community. We didn't see any parts fall off, just the ones that were in the car, they fell. They fell out of the car. We are running out of surface area for all these decals that you sent Dan wow Bob did you come to help apply uh, shipping stickers we got extras if you want to put some on your vehicle <laughs> it's a Bricklin yeah it's it's a uh, oh man these are separate pieces God, I'm gonna have to figure out hot curbs hit girls that oh yeah we should, nah, hot curbs hit girls. Hit curbs. No. Oh, you got hot hot girls hit curbs. It should say hot girls have curbs, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Danny would say. Or maybe we, we could just change it to hot girls hit. Uh, uh, Farmer Bob's got his own thermal imaging camera. We're going to go make sure we don't uh, hit the uh, water pipes in the floor when we anchor the uh, mezzanine. But all right, Dan, we got your... Uh, we got your stickers. Make sure to check out ddschmoo.ca for all your uh, merchandise and, and shipping decals. What a sweet ride this is going to be when he gets her all super carred up. This thing's definitely going to be at uh, Pebble Beach. Yep. 24 7 super rare resto rod. What a guy. Just scratch the, the dates off of the license we should steal that i mean it'd be a shame if that oh my god a rag for a gas cap what a deal nothing like a supercar with a rag for a gas cap all right well it was nice meeting you dan and danny enjoy your canadian supercar i know we won't miss it that's for sure you even know how to run that thing i haven't run this very much it's usually the paid professionals oh your dog is in heat <laughs> well is that why the lights are off back here so you can see no, if you don't like peanut butter, no. You're not that kind of dog. Well, you're about 80 degrees. Can we see the tubes? Well, I can't do it. So you want to drill into these? Yeah. And I think from what I remember that the, the tube came out here on the corner, but yeah. you're in the way, Duff. And I know we could see the... You can see the tubes. Here. Yeah. Well, so here's the other thing is, I don't know if the floor heats on. Duff says we're good. That uh, tube wraps around here, swings wide, and that side doesn't get close to the wall, so we should be able to uh, anchor this thing down. Give you a little update. We got some lights wired up. We got some railing in place. We got a gusset over here. We're going to tie her down to the floor, so if somebody can't clip it with the skid steer or forklift or sledgehammer same thing over here got our anchor down and then we're gonna put we got that flat iron there then we're gonna put uh, one of these guys to tie it to that red iron you can go show them the upstairs oh yeah and we got this two by six brace and we uh ran all these two by six stringers in here could have used two by 12 but more headroom and it's a uh, pretty short span i think these are only like 30 some inches and we anchored the 2x12 to the wall. Plus we got her tied to our stairs. And then we got some 2x4 railing all the way around there. We got her all sheeted with 3 quarter inch plywood. Walt helped do that. And then we got 3 quarter inch plywood and 2x4s uh, there so we can set some stuff up here. I want to close this in just so stuff can't fall on people's heads. Same thing over here. So Pookie's kids can't jump off. And action! And uh, yeah, we got to hang up our door. We're going to put some pallet racking up here. I think I'm going to build some stuff, I think. But I'm, I'm pretty burned out on carpentry. This was too much for me. But yeah, we're going to gain a lot of storage. I think it's 16 by 14. And this whole mezzanine is 40 by 14. So that's a lot of, 
a lot of storage that we got up here. We can see our belts and hoses, battery cables are a mess. So we gotta figure that out. And we gotta hang some signs up, do some decorating. We could make a dedicated video for that. Just kidding. Go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you wanna see that stuff. But speaking of decor, you should decorate your shop in our hand model. Chin is here and he's gonna, he's gonna show you the uh, the new banners. We got the OG Do banner. We got the Low Life banner, and now for you hams drinkers, we got the Crown logo. These ones, I like it with all the blue. Yeah, pretty good. Get yours at Mortsky.com. Get them, get them before they are all sold out or Chin steals them all. Definitely taking this one. You're taking that one. Yeah. I got one over here. I think we're gonna hang it on that uh, railing. For now, that'll keep Pookie's kids from jumping out. The, the, one, the do one works because that's kind of how the logo is. Now we're just kind of in the center. This is like real nice, really nice. Yeah. Like if I wrapped it around an aluminum cylinder, it'd be like a can. Oh yeah, you just need like a little one of those small tin trash cans and be like a... just wrap it around all the trash cans. Trash. <laughs> anyway, back to work. Well, what do you say we uh? Put the old Model A coupe to work. We got a bunch of packages to deliver. A bunch of ball caps and then uh, some decals and koozies and magnetic screwdrivers and all that good stuff. Get yours at Mortski.com. Thanks for all you uh, folks who purchased this stuff. The old Model A works pretty good for hauling it. You gonna load it up for me? No, but you'll ride with to the post office. I tell you what, this thing cruises really good at about 30 mile an hour. I don't know if I'd want to drive it to Albuquerque, but it works real good for running a few miles into town and dropping off the mail and picking up groceries, running to the lumber yard, stuff like that. Not a lot of trunk space, so. We do have the luggage rack, but I'd rather not use it. Don't want to lose your guys' packages. Oh yeah, we got banners too. You can get those at Morsky.com. This is way better than an LS powered three quarter ton merch van. Like, Old fancy pants of pudding's got. Perfect. We haven't lost the package yet. Want to go for a ride? Of course you do. I do have to tell him to scoot over because uh, watch where he sits. Yeah, it's uh, not as big as the old cowboy Cadillac duff. I need a little more room for my butt than that. It's the weather like duff. It's windy, but it's 42 degrees. Feels like about 15 degrees. We're working on the old double clutching thing. We're not. We're not professionals. That's for sure. But we changed the oil in the transmission and the rear end, and it shifts way better. There was a lot of gunk and sludge and. Unfortunately, metal in the transmission, but doesn't seem to make much noise. Maybe that's metal was from me uh, not double clutching. Who knows? You know, the defrost doesn't work that great, so if you could not breathe all over the window, that'd be great. Oh man, we're up to 45. Let's throttle her back a bit. The nice thing about this thing is it does have mirrors, which is anything that happened back there was in the past, but it's still nice to look back once in a while. The heater's good down to, uh, I would say, we drove around the other night, it was 22 degrees, and we drove around for about an hour and a half. I was ready to be home after that, so I'd say she's good down to 25, maybe, 30 mile an hour. Then again, I was just like this, stocking cap. 
dickies and a sweatshirt. So, I mean, if you bundle up and dress for it, you can probably drive it whatever. But the biggest thing is there's no defrost, so keeping the window or the windows defrosted is the hardest part. You can't, like I said, you just get the warm air that's blowing off the engine off that manifold heater. You don't, you can't direct it at the glass or anything. Speaking of glass, the glass in this car, there's a couple little dingers in the windshield. Other than that, the glass is really good shape. I don't know if it's been replaced or if it's original or what. It definitely draws a lot of attention when it's 20 degrees out cruising your Model A Coupe in the town. Not that it doesn't get attention on a, I don't know, I've never driven it above 60 degrees or 50 degrees probably. It's been a lot of 30 and 40 degree weather since we picked this car up a couple months ago. Not even a couple months ago, what is it been? Month and a half? We've been driving it a bunch. I don't know what it gets for fuel economy. We're down to a quarter tank of fuel. Found out if you fill it all the way full, it leaks out the sight glass up here and uh, onto our nice new rubber floor mat. So you don't want to fill her all the way up. I would imagine we can get some kind of socket and get in there and pull that out and put a new seal in the sight glass, but we'll just keep a running list of things that need to be fixed. And then either never fix them or wait until we're ready to sell it and then fix all that stuff and sell it. Because why fix it so you can enjoy it? Is that how it is for you? Yeah, I drive a car for three, four, five years with all these new parts sitting around and then I throw them on right before I sell it. I guess that's the way she goes. We could break the speed limit in a school zone if we really wanted to. That's about the only place. I think I'm gonna run to the insurance office in town while we're here. And uh, maybe see if they can't get us some insurance. Business insurance. I've never had it. And apparently it's difficult to get when you're a YouTube sensation such as Duff. Oh crap, here's the popo, Johnny Cheeseburger himself. Act cool, Duff. Oh, a nice fluffy white kitty. Whoops. Sometimes we bump the horn. Get my elbow when I'm turning. We're backing up. Apparently dogs are not allowed in the post office, according to the new sign, so Duff, you just gotta hang out here. Some little kid walking over from school just said, hey! I like that car. So I said thank you. She uh, attracts some attention. That's a thing. I like to be low key, but the vehicles we generally drive are not so low key. Those kids are all waving at us driving home in their Ranger from school cruise down Main Street. I wonder how many of these buildings existed in 1931 when this car was built. Probably not very many of them. A couple of the brick ones, maybe. Alright, can we flip a Yui on Main Street? How's the turning radius on this thing? Pretty good from what I remember. Oh yeah. It's real nice. Guys, let's just play say Junior 1. Shouldn't be Junior 8? Doing it for Dale. All right, Dove, I'm going to pull into the insurance office, see what they can do for your business insurance. You just want to hang out here? I'm guessing they, they can insure you without actually physically meeting you. I don't know how long this is going to take, so I better shut the gas off. All right, see you in a bit. All right, I think we got them going down the right path. If anybody knows how business insurance works, I think they talk about garage keepers insurance. I don't know, garage keep something. Everybody's so sue happy. I don't even didn't even care about insurance until somebody's like, "What happens if something falls off your trailer? What happens if you sell a car and the wheel falls off? What happens? What happens? What happens?" I guess we could just live under a rock. Some days that sounds pretty nice. Park my off? Yep. And then I said, we need insurance. She goes, we? Like, who's we? I'm like, 
me and my dog. And she, and she laughed. She goes, I shouldn't laugh. And I'm like, he's in the car. I could bring him in. Oh, funny ladies. Insurance. What a racket. It's a really nice day out. Other than the wind. But I think the wind is even dying down. It was the bank closed. We should have went to the bank while we were there. We don't have any money anyway, so what are we going there for? Better save our money so that we can give it all to the insurance people. Come on, let me drive here. I know you want pets, but. Alright, we better get back in the shop and get back to work, or Mojo's gonna be mad at us. I mean, he already does all the work around there mostly, mainly. Just ask Puddin'. And you are the face of the YouTube channel. Oh, it's got visors. I didn't even know that. I don't dare touch them because they probably. I never even knew Model A's had visors. I bet I've owned 30 or 40 Model A's. And they've been rough. They've been real rough. But I don't think I've ever seen one that even had like a frame or a hinge or anything from a. And maybe they're add on. I'm not a Model A expert. So I don't know about this stuff. We kind of look at it on. Comment down below if you know if Model A's came with sun visors originally. I bet they did. back in the garage we'll bring this video back up when we get back to the model a. ignition off choke off gas off park brake set and in neutral a lot more to drive in an old car than there is a new one i can tell you that make sure you got the lights off too i want a dead battery dewey duff hard to find a hill to park on to boost this thing and you're not very good at dropping the clutch or pushing. So there you have it. This is my 1931 Model A Coupe. Uh, I've actually noticed the uh, Skip Carlson Coupe because that's who I got it from. He was the gentleman who enjoyed it the most, I would say. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Get yourself some merch at uh, Mortski.com. Make sure to get your ball cap. Uh, coming Cinco de Drinco, the 5th of May. We're going to have a uh, nastiest cat, cat, grubbiest cap competition, whatever. In order to be part of that, you got to have yours. You might as well get one six months in advance and start wearing it in. So it's nice and grubby and it can compete with this guy. And uh, we'll give you guys some swag. So uh, get your caps at Mortski.com. We got banners, kind of like these guys. Uh, and we got pins we got magnetic can koozies we got super scrapers on hand hurry up and get them i just got a shipment in yesterday tuesday this video is coming out the following monday so get them quick guys um they if you're watching this right now and it's like thursday we we'll probably don't have them anymore because they go real quick and it's not because we don't get a ton of them we get a bunch but they they go real quick we got shirts we got decals we got, like I said, banners, can koozies, Bic pens. We got everything that you need. If we don't got it, you don't need it. All right, thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. And remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. And we plan to have a lot of fun in this Model A coupe. We already had a bunch of fun in it, haven't we, Duff? Riding around in it is a lot more fun than talking about it. I would agree. Should we go for a ride? Ears perk up immediately. Today, me and the tow pig, the tow pig and I, are by Carver, Minnesota. We are going to the Skip Swanson Collection auction sale. He's got a 34 Ford three window with a Merc flathead and no fenders. So it's a high boy and a Columbia rear end, all kinds of cool stuff. He's got a 34 Roadster in pieces. He's got a Model A coupe, a Model A pickup, a Model A Roadster. Some of it's been through fires. He's just got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we're about four hours away from home. We got up and left just before six and uh, We're running late as always. So we're gonna go see what they got. They got two rings going a bunch of this stuff was pre-bid online 
And uh, I don't know what we're gonna come up with. There's a 33, 34 Ford pickup box. That's what we came after. Will we get it? I don't know. I'm guessing we're gonna come home with more garbage than that because that's pretty much what we do. Buy garbage. But a lot of stuff, a lot of cool early Ford stuff. He's got some British stuff and he's got some motorcycles and all that good stuff that we don't need. So hopefully we don't end up with that. Maybe one of the British cars, just so DD Speed Shop and I can uh, remake the uh, Grey Poupon scene. Pardon me, do you have any Grey Poupon? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get parked and I'll show you what we find. Hopefully we can find a parking spot. That's the first thing we wanna find. Cause we got the 22 foot trailer and the tow pig. Oh my gosh. A lot of cars. Son of a biscuit. I'm guessing we gotta park way back here. Hopefully we don't buy a bunch of smalls that we gotta carry back. All the blue platers. They're starting on some small items, so take a look. Here's a 41 pickup titled with a loose flathead. Model A pickup that went through a fire. I guess okay, this has got a Model B engine that's been rebuilt. A lot of these burnt cars didn't get hot enough to burn the tires completely off, so that's a good sign. Hopefully the sheet metal didn't get too warped. There's the bed that's going with it. Looks like an old light. Some 45 fin Buicks, it's 90 fins. Juice brakes, chrome spare tire mount. Has it got a flathead in it? Seen them before. Ah, oh, it's an inline, dang it. Shrams were notorious for having a flathead V8s with half the cylinders pulled out of it. I've seen two U-Haul ones with 302s in them. Oh really? Yeah. A little bit newer? Some early Ford three speeds. Ooh, flathead starters. 15 bucks gear sets, more three speeds, some side shifts, a couple top shifts, clutches, juice brake pedals, 40 Ford steering column. You can tell it's a 40 because it's cross steer and it's got shift around the column. That was the first year of that. Model A gas tanks, pile of windshield frames. Oh. There's a Wilton Vice, but Jaw's been welded. She's had a rough life. Lathe chucks. Spring starters alternators. I think they got everything cleaned out here that they're gonna sell, but this thing was just packed with 34s and Model Ts. A couple Model Ts. Oh, there's the Arrow Light. I think that was at a grand before it auction started already. Pretty nice T Roadster. Drop the front end. Another T Roadster. Aftermarket wire wheels and springs. Here's the 34 Roadster. Comes with a bunch of parts too. Drop axle, wood kit. It's got a flathead, three speed. Comes with that spare cowl too. Pretty solid car. A lot of wood in the roadsters. So its doors are just pretty much a skin. And then that's all wood. Pile of motorcycles and dirt bikes here. What is that? Oh, Nissan inline six. A couple of them. More Ford brakes. Drill shelves, axles. There's an open drive line. A couple of them. I think those are 46, 7 Ford pickups. Banjos, more transmissions. Everything, including the bathroom sinks. Porcelain lights. Warford trannies for Model T's, aftermarket accessory.
Fresh model A radiator, some T deck lids. Looks like a model, a lot of model T yeah. stuff. Cool old sign posts back there. I don't know much about model T, so we'll just power through this. Bunch of hubcaps, lights, seats. Some 682 headlights. Bunch of Holly carbs. I don't see any Stromberg. 55 Chevy grill. I guess they're keeping the T Roadster back there. PTOs. Tractor chains. There's a small block. Early one with the front engine mounts. Keeping the Jeep. I guess that Huff payloader's got a small block Chevy in it. Another small block. Some Model A engines. A couple of flatheads. 159AB and 18BA. More headlights. I guess they're starting on cars, so I might have to get over there. Or maybe not. This guy had just piles of steel wheels, wire wheels, steel wheels, you name it. 38 Chevy Grill, she's pretty rough. 41 Ford Dash, bumpers, trannies, more hubcaps, bunch of stuff. So like a 41 Buick Grill. Hoods, some great big four wheel drive front axles. Oh, here's the old sprint car. I think it was the last year of the removable hoop. I wonder if it's got any relation to the sprint car chassis that we got. It's got a Franklin quick change rear and an alt box. Pretty crude, but that's the way they run them back then. Well, there's the spare rear end. This is a cool old. Walker electric four post lift. I think this is similar to what Iron Trap's got in their shop. It's really cool, but it's also really big in Auckland. Kind of like me. I guess there was some new old stock Ford tires. Actual Ford branded tires. That was on the pre-bid. Boat trailers, because you know we're in Minnesota. All kinds of trailers. Looks like some homemade tractor dune buggy thing. Here's a Model A Roadster. This has got a Model B in it. It's a Brookville body. It was in the fire. Again, Got hot enough to melt the paint off, but didn't melt the tires. It's got an aftermarket head on it, speed head, Stromberg downdraft carb, header, 35 wires, 342 gear, 354 gears, two sprakes. Pretty cool car. Pre-bid was at like 2,500, something like that. Chop the windshield, maybe? I can't tell. Not an expert. There's a couple of T's. Touring and a roadster. Bunch of cool old signs. Standard service sign, triple A, oil signs. I think this giant standard one was at five grand, was the pre bid. But that's cool. There's all the bikes. Big line of them. We're gonna avoid those, hopefully. Gas pumps, belly tanks. This is a 33, 34 chassis. She is rough. Swiss cheese. The bottom lip is just gone on it. There's a couple 35, 40 frames here too. We got a yard full of them, so we don't need those. I didn't see that payloader on there. That's a big guy. Another T Touring, pretty nice car. Cab over Kenworth was on there, I think a 66. That's a pretty early one. 19.9 Maxwell, allegedly one of two registered with the uh, horseless carriage company club thing. The car. I guess this car's at three grand pre bid. This is his daily driver, even in the winter, 3031. Model A coupe. Real decent bones on it. You can see he's been beating up and down the gravel with it. <laughs> Drive it home. 
nice car. Vacuum horn on it. Yeah, it's a good car. 3031 Roadster. Again, looks like a runner. Yeah, this one wouldn't take much either. Rumble seat. Decent interior in it. Here's the gem. 343 window. That's a 39 Chevy taillights. It's got a little filler in the body line. I always thought my deck was heavy. Lift this one. I always thought my deck was Lift this one. Merck flathead, Stromberg carb, 37 Pontiac headlights, drop axle, juice brakes, cast iron Fenton headers, aluminum intake, chrome water pump, aftermarket air cleaner and oil filter. Yeah, cool car. She's uh, had some metal work done, but where are you going to find a 34-3 window? Said wheel wells put in it. There should be some outlines in there for stamping beads, ribs, whatever you call it. 37 Ford trunk lid handle. Super solid though. Gonna take a little work to get her into paint, but I'd run the crap out of this car as is. Yeah, put some body work done on the belt lines might even be a sedan converted into a coupe who knows 34 you can tell it's got this lip right there 33s didn't have that and then 34's got that hole or 33's got a hook I must have been gonna fix up a dodge he's got a really nice bed and cab for one and there's a 69 70 nova front clip 62 chevy 61 chevy I think a 67 Galaxy T sedan. Oh, there's that 33 four box. Another T Roadster. Somebody riveted some panels in there. Cut some holes in the dash for some gauges. Somebody's old hot rod. Here's the bed we came to see. Well, it's got a good floor because it held water. You can tell by the ice it was, I think it's 14 degrees when I left this morning. Pretty dang nice bed, little hooey there. No tailgate. Banged in a few spots back here. This lip is peeled out. Yeah, this upright needs some work. But it's super solid. And the rails aren't all beat up. The front panel's got a couple whammies. Whammy! Here's a pretty nice 28.9 two-door sedan. This was in that building it saw in the picks. A little dent in the quarter, a little rust down in the sub rails like they all got. I mean, right there is where they start rusting, and that's how much it's got. Really cool. Pretty dang nice body. With all the small stuff, this is gonna take all day. And then it's a big long winding road, and we got a trailer. One lane, so getting in and out of here. It's gonna be interesting. I think the three windows at like 22 grand pre bid. 28 9 Model 8 truck. I think these are Jaguars. Or rolls. She's rolls. A lot of mud in that front fender. Holy buckets. No title. No engine in that guy. Another Rolls Royce. I guess these are all Rolls. And they are rough. I guess this International. It's got a small block Chevy in it. Sure enough, small block, headers, her engine mount, flexi fan, no flexi hoses though. We got the brakes on the firewall. This is somebody's hot rod. Tinted windows, bucket seats, her floor shifter. Floors are gone though. Some aftermarket gauges, sewer owners from I would say the 70s. Looks like it's got 53,000 on it, so nobody was driving her. 
Not a bad little pickup. I'm guessing that's the GM rear end. Maybe it's a stock international. I don't know. I doubt it. Doesn't look that old. Last tag to 95, so too long ago. Oh, it's got the grain door and the tailgate. Yeah, pretty cool little rig. Make a great pressure washing video for pudding. Room, room. It's even got the chrome steel slots. Buick with the nail head. Super rusty 60 Chev four door post. No drivetrain. No spindles. Jail bar Ford. Look at how they were cooling it. Cut some holes in the hood. And a couple of spears and other accessories on the hood. 69 or 70 Chevy pickup. Rusty. 55 6 Chevy three quarter ton. Six cylinder with the old die hard in the engine bay. 64 Chev Biscayne or Bel Air four door post. Two wheel drive Ram Charger with the Keystones. I think it's pretty cool, but she's squishy. And the IH Metro. Hoofta. Made ours look solid. I guess he was using this when he had a band. Oh, she's got a Ford inline six. Look at that shifter. Oh my. Pipe they smashed flat. It's 70s carpet. Porno paneling. Oh yeah, good stuff. I gotta see what this thrashing button. The Scott Carter Thrashing B. 1982. Yeah, somebody updated her with a Ford. I guess that's an automatic. Maybe not. You can got an ore for when you're up Poop Creek. You got the paddle. And then a trailer and a flatbed. And that's about it. Let's go do some bidding. This guy had it all, even the barber chair. Theo A. Cox Company, Chicago. Cigarette machines. The French Grain Company. I'm guessing that's where that thing used to be parked. 30 cents. Yosemite Sam. Didn't you get banned too? Bunch of gas pumps. Quick relief, F and F cost lozenges. There's all the wheels I was talking about. Holy cow. Some diesel engines. There's those new old stock belly tanks. These are at eight and a half. Chevaholic make himself a uh, another belly tanker speedster. Great big winches. Standing over here, look at this neat old wrecker boom. I think this was on the pre bid too. Got style to it. I was looking at this Girlinger. No way this thing would ever run again because it's got a Y block and a flexi hose. Check out this gauge panel. The old Stuart Warner gauge panels. Worth the price of admission. Gotta look for stuff like that. Oh, it is on the auction. Lot 551. Okay, big. Lot number 567. We've got that standard 17 foot double sided porcelain sign on the cast iron gas station sign stand. Excuse me. And again, guys, you may find the sign, the sign but you won't yeah, find it on the stand. Go. Help yourself right here. We're going to sell it. Thank you, 8100. I appreciate the help online, guys. Sold it out. 900. This time we got it. Thank you, sir. Number 542. 900. Number 542. Thank you. How about 300? Bidigo, 300. 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 Who wants to be 100, guys? Sold it out. 175. 438. Now 4900. Now 4900. Bidigo, 49. Thank you. Now 5000. Even money. Now 5000. 49. And now 5000. Sold it out. 4900. dollars Thank you. 4900. Thank you for the help, sir. Roadster right here. Again, titles with sales tax. Pat. Pat. All the extra parts are going to go along with it, guys. Let us sell this quick. Take two and two, guys. On the car right here, the 1934 Roadster right there. You tell me, guys, what do you want to get there? How about $25,000 there? How about $25,000 on the 1934 Roadster? How about $25,000? $25, how about $20,000, guys? How about $20,000? $15,000 now, $16,000. But he goes to team, but he goes to team, but he goes to team, but he goes to team. Yes, there, guys. Help yourself right there. $15,000 now, $16,000. $25,000, but he goes $2,500. How about $25,000? How about $25,000? How about $1,000? 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 How about $
let us know. We're going to move on to the Maxwell. That's going to be the red one. Lot number 502, 1909 Maxwell Jr. Lot number 502, guys, on the 1909 Maxwell Jr. This is one of only two registered with the Horseless Carriage Club. All original, guys. Two cylinders, and it runs and drives. It is titled sales tax and title fees will apply again this one also started and drove out here this morning even on a cold minnesota morning guys and this one again in the winter time normally they use the horses and the slaves they didn't use these cars they put the cars away for the winter time and again they got the horses back out of the pasture so this is uh not usually a cold runner but it started this morning we'll see if she wants to pop off again this this afternoon and skipped in some uh tours with this it was new london to new brighton is that right skip that has done that tour a few times new london and new brighton obviously if you guys do buy this just talk to skip on how to do all of the things he's doing and there it's running
Jeff and I went for a drive in this thing up to the top of the hill, and you talk about tight steering, guys, I tell you, it's a nice little cozy cab, but I tell you what, a fun car right there. Nice coupe here, guys. Title sales tax and title fees will apply. This is Skip's baby right here. On a three window coupe right here, guys, you tell me, what do you want to give there? Lot number 501, how about $50,000 there? And the blinkers work too, how about $50,000 there? How about $50,000, but he go 50,000, but he go 50,000, but he go 50,000, but he go 50,000. How about $40,000, but he go 40,000, but he go 40,000, but he go 40,000. $32,000 online, and now $35,000, $32,000 online, now $35,000, $32,000, now $35,000, $32,000, $32, I'll take $33,000 one time, now $33,000, sir, now $33,000, but he got $33,000, now $34,000, now $34,000, Danny, how about you, now $34,000, if the other guy takes that car, I'll take this one, $33,000, now $34,000, talk to Skip, and now $34,000, $33,000, now $34,000, $34, take your one more shot, now $34,000, $33,000, and now $34,000, 35 and now 34, but you go 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 34. Again, guys, this is another one of his daily drivers. Help yourself here. Here you want one more shot. Way to go 34,000. Anybody else 34,000? But you go 34,000. 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 Guys, I can't tell you that close only counts in horseshoes. Sir, give me 34,000 and I'm going to beat him up. Drive it home today. Give me $34,000. Good running car. <laughs> Extra parts alongside of it. All going to go right along with it. $34,000. You want to do thirty-four? No. Okay. Guys, we are right there. Are we not, Skip? Whoa. If you guys are interested, I'm not kidding you. You think about this and come and talk to me after the sale. He can't take everything with him. But if he if he gave me thirty-four, I would go and tackle Skip right now and say, Skip. We want to see that. Then give him the extra money so he can spend thirty-four thousand and you'll watch it. We'll sell tickets too. We're gonna carry on with the auction and go up to the next item here, guys. We're gonna go back up to the front clips. We're gonna back up here. He told me it was a doctor's coupe because the doctor originally owned it. Okay. <laughs> now our expectations of Kelly Lake Road is that you need to drive it up the road at least once a week. Yep. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> the problem is I live four hours away in North Dakota, so <laughs> it's okay, or or uh, nine and a half hours in that car. <laughs> so you haven't done a whole lot to this little no, bit of mechanical. No, I've not done a whole lot to it. Um, Trying to think, I think I put kingpins and bushings in it. Um, uh, the brakes are just the one that, yeah, this one I just put 35 brakes in the front. You notice how the drum is bigger? Oh, okay. It's so it's still mechanical, but they're still a, a mechanical. little improvement. Yeah, you get a bigger drum and a wider shoe, but mainly they're cast iron. The, the drum oh, instead of being leader. stamped. And, yeah, they're stamped in, they, they, uh, they heat up right away and start slipping them. Okay. So I just put 35 drums and shoes and shit on the front of it, which improved it drastically. Uh, if I was to keep it, the next step would be to go through the rear brakes. But they're adequate now, even with just a little bit that I did. Okay. Um, it, has, uh, it has a fuel filter on it because apparently some grunge is in the tank. And so okay. I, I empty that and clean it, you know, once or twice. Clear so you can keep an eye on it. Yeah, yeah just so it doesn't plug up on you out on the highway is the main thing. Sure. Even, even if it does, you pull it off and dump it out and you're good to go. Carry on, you yeah. ever have trouble with it feeding fuel at one of them? I put a plastic going on and it would not feed. Yeah, I I've, I've one heard of, of that, ones. but yeah. I did not you have didn't? trouble. I had one of those glass ones for a while yep. and the screen ain't big enough. All right, and it's not small enough, I mean. So yeah. uh, so I was still getting little particles inside the carburetor. Sure. Right but otherwise, uh, not much to say. This is a B-manifold. You see how the carburetor is cocked sideways? Okay. It's a B manifold. Oh, we're gonna get the big power out of that. Well, bull you just have a you know, A manifold on it again, you know. Did you put the alternator on it then? Yes, I did because I drive at night a lot and it has sealed beam lights. And uh, it, that's with just the regular generator. Uh, if you go out when it's light, one way out, yep. and then you drive Come home back. with the lights on, you're pretty good. But in the winter, when it's dark both ways, the generator would barely keep up. Oh, sure. And in the old days, you'd you'd set the generator up. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. So you'd set that third brush up so it's charging more. But then right. the next day, you're supposed to set it back again so you don't overcharge the battery. And that's how they the did it in the old days. The joys of six volt. Yeah, but us us lazy Americans nowadays, <laughs> we don't want to do that, so we just put an alternator. On. Right. Yeah. So that's a, a still positive ground, six volt positive ground. Yeah. And. Uh, this doesn't work. I've had bad luck with them. They only last a little while and then they burn out. 
they're kind of fun while they last. What? There's just a plunger in there, isn't there? Isn't that all it is? It's uh, yeah, it's just a valve down here, and then it spins a thingy around to make it whistle. You know, I, I don't understand why they go bad. Maybe the pushing wears out, or they probably wore out things when I got them at a swap meet. Yeah. I don't know what. Oh yeah. It was originally a rumble seat car when I got it. Okay, I, I saw it had the pads on the fender, so you. Have you ever had a rumble seat? I rode in one as a kid, and yeah, I've. Well, they suck because. Yeah. You can't the, haul nothing in them. Exactly. When the lid's closed, both the seat cushions are touching, so you can't even throw a light jacket in there or nothing, or the lid won't close. Right. And then the next option is to throw it down on the floor, where you can't even reach it. You may, you're taller than me. You maybe could, but I'd have to crawl up. Well, I'm going to have to take that partition off in the back where you can move the seat back so that I can... Yeah, so I can. People have done yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that trick. Um, well, yeah, I was. Was it this car or the Roadster? I was looking just to fit your foot in between the the seat and the. You know, they, it took them until the 40s to figure that out. Yeah. I had a I had a Packard here that was a 126 inch wheelbase, you know, so this much longer than these cars, and you still couldn't get your foot in the door. Yeah. That's why you buy the expensive ones and you can swing your whole leg in. Right. So what's this? You kind of bought that car as is then, or yeah, yeah no, the the three window. No, no, I built that from the frame up. Okay. Gotcha. So that must be pretty fresh build then. Probably. Uh, Five years. Okay. Sure. Yeah, that's a pretty slick setup with that Columbia and stuff. You know? Yeah. That's nice uh, too. Uh, this sucks. And uh, <laughs> what do you mean it sucks? Just well, that's where the spare tire should be on a Model A because the side mount. Uh, this one was not adjusted properly, and so the tire was resting on the fender, and that's why the fender caused the fender to crack. And it, it also in that area of the frame you've got the motor mounts and the hole for the spare tire thing and so it, and, uh, it makes it a really a weak spot and they tend to sag which is why the hood doesn't close very good on this oh. one so i was going to take that off and put the regular mount on the back so this was like that had that luggage rack on the back yeah when you got that was it. on there when i bought it but okay. i would put the tire on the back is what I was gonna do. in fact i think i bought it. I think it's in the garage. I'll give it to you if, if you want it. The, the, the mount. Well, I don't know if I'm going to put as many miles on it as you. <laughs> guy from Oklahoma yesterday said, oh, 35. I'm going to bid more than that. I know he wasn't online today, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. I always had this thing on here. It rattles around and drives you crazy. Oh, on the... Yeah. Uh, and now I'm going to go $500. I'm going to go $500. Uh, that's a nice old antique jack that I like those old things. You see what happens when I drive on the gravel roads all the time. It's disgusting. Boy, you really packed it in there. Oh, that was when you were driving it on the car. Yeah, that didn't collect that much dust no, back no, here. No, on the car. But, uh, okay. We got a, if we have a real dry summer, that's just for me driving around on the gravel road. I've, I've been known to go out uh, at sunset with a couple of cans of beer. That's what that's what your neighbor said. He said uh, a couple have been consumed in this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Got a fuel shot off under the dash then like yeah. most. These are, uh, you know what, an indented firewall? Yeah, the late 30. I was looking at that. So it, it kind of loops out because I was looking well, for a sediment. That. Uh, oh, okay. Because usually there'd be a sediment bowl right here, correct? Right, and the valve is inside. So you can turn the gas off from inside the car. And you always have to turn the gas off. Because gravity feed and the gravity needle and seat so never... If it, if it doesn't seat, then all your gas is on the floor, you know? Sure. But anyway, uh, this firewall was in bad shape. And so I thought, since it's not perfect already, let's plumb it up so that I can turn the gas off from inside. Otherwise, you had to come out here and turn it off outside under the hood. Yeah, you know? and you're driving it, so. Well, I park in that little garage down there, usually, where you can hardly scoot alongside oh. the car. Oh. And you're in the dark, and I don't want to scoot up here and open the hood every time. It's right. easier to turn it off inside the car. And, uh, and it has, uh, it's got one of those points, uh, modern points adapter things in it. So okay. You use, uh, Use a four V8 points. It was the same for many years, like 57 to 70 or something. Okay. Overhead valve stuff then. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so that's the gas valve now. It's just a regular thing when it's oh yeah. Well, it's on when it's crossed like that. It's off. 
Okay. When it's, when it's in line, it's on, and then when it's yeah. perpendicular, it's... The heater thing is open now. You close that in the summer. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. All the lights and all that good yeah, stuff work? Yeah, turn signals on it even. Okay. I used to always kind of scoff at turn signals on an antique car. You don't need that. But when you're driving that slow, had, and they're actually kind of nice to have occasionally, you know. I don't use it unless there's. It's not so much for you; it's for the other idiots. Yeah, it's to, to tell the other guy you're taking a left or something, you know. Right. So, uh, I don't like them. This is supposed to have a crossbar back here. This one broke off, as you can see. That would help the things from wiggling around so much. Any other tricks to starting it? Um, it's flood pretty easy. I I usually pull the choke out. Give it about one revolution and put it in, and then she'll start right up. Okay. Easy enough. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. You bet. Sold it out 2300 your way. Well, in case you weren't aware, we're the proud new owners of a Model A coupe. We don't have to do a will it run because it fired right up. Got a pair of, uh, I think they're 62 Chevrolet bucket seats, according to the Iowa Classic Car Ryan. Those were a steal. I don't know yet on the coupe, but let's get the heck out of here. Hopefully it makes it up the hill. Oh, Skip definitely smoked a few cigarettes in here. buying one that runs and drives is I don't have to come in here with my stupid trailer and try to get in and out. Luggage rack, running lights? What a freaking deal here. Perfect for hauling junk home. We got old Skipper tied down here. Check the doors and the deck lid one more time. And head west. Yeah, he said this luggage rack's gotta go. It's kind of a not so good piece. It needs a little TLC. All right. Let's do this. 